In-office expression of the meibomian glands can provide significant relief because the backed up glands in the eyelids can be painful and also contribute to dry eye. Meibomian gland expression is both an easy and highly effective procedure for reducing symptoms and improving signs in meibomian gland dysfunction. And because so many people have MGD and it represents such a significant portion of dry eye disease, proper management and treatment are essential for improving a patient's ocular health. Welcome back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Make sure to give a tap on the subscribe button below to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. So let's talk about the meibomian glands again. I've made a hundred videos about them. They're all up here. But why do the meibomian glands get blocked? Well, there's no one easy answer to meibomian gland dysfunction. There can be several contributing factors from aging and environmental stress to wearing contact lenses or using certain systemic and topical medications. There's a variety of factors that can play a role in the development of this condition. While it's something that can affect anyone, some people are more prone to it than others. So age does play a role. If you're over the age of 50, the possibility of developing meibomian gland dysfunction becomes more likely, particularly if you're also female. As you age, some meibomian gland cells atrophy, which results in a decrease in lipid production. At the heart of these changes is likely reduced cell renewal and meibomian gland size, as well as an increase in inflammatory cells in the area that affects your gland. There's also environmental stress. If your eyes are in a very dry environment, it can lead to changes in the cells that make mybum. These are called the mybocyte. Changes in the ratio of lipids to proteins in the mybum and other alterations can cause a depletion in the number of functioning meibomian glands over the long term. Also, the thickness of the mybum itself may increase over time, which may ultimately make the tear film less stable and contribute to your symptom. We also have hormonal changes. So hormones can have a huge impact on meibomian gland dysfunction. The meibomian glands have both estrogen and androgen receptors, which makes these hormones important in these in, in patients, in making our tears actually, our hormones matter. Generally, androgen hormones both stimulate meibom secretion and reduce inflammation. Estrogen, on the other hand, increases inflammation. So individuals with low androgen levels, including those receiving anti-androgen therapy, are at an increased risk for meibomian gland dysfunction. This can include patients with prostate cancer or BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy, who are undergoing anti-androgen therapy. Believe it or not, that can actually affect your eyes. What do my eyes have to do with my medical history? Well, there you go. What you're going through medically elsewhere can absolutely contribute to eye issues. There's also complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, which is a genetic condition in which the body doesn't respond to androgen. So Sjogren's syndrome is another one, an autoimmune disease associated with dry eyes and dry mouth. Medication usage can impact meibomian glands. Some medications affect function and impact the quality of the oil produced by the meibomian glands. We already know there's medications that can cause changes. I've made whole videos about Accutane causing meibomian gland atrophy. Topical epinephrine can cause meibomian gland blockage and dilation. Topical glaucoma medications like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, prostaglandin analogs especially, and even beta blockers can cause meibomian gland changes. There's also genetics. We find that there's a genetic component to MGD with some people born with this condition. You may have been born with meibomian and glands either absent altogether or less than the average person. That can be in Turner syndrome, a genetic disorder where there's only one X chromosome rather than two, or an X and a Y. Can also happen with ectodermal dysplasia, anhydrotic ectodermal dysplastic syndrome, dystichiasis, and even when there's cardiovascular issues. So my MGD is not a cardiovascular disease, but there's research to show that there can be an association between the severity of meibomian gland dysfunction and increasing levels of lipid components like cholesterol, triglycerides, 
LDLs, HDLs, those can affect meibomian glands. And the severity of meibomian gland dysfunction tends to be linked to increased lipid levels. While we don't know everything about the connection, there's some thinking that cholesterol in the meibom and other lipid levels may play a role in developing meibomian gland disease. There's also some readily controllable lifestyle factors that come into play with meibomian gland dysfunction. Diet, eat can play an important role in improving the quality of the oil produced, in particular the amount of omega-3 fatty acid you consume. I'll link here about fatty acids, omega-3s, and really looking for triglyceride form, highly purified pharmaceutical grade omega-3s with high levels of EPA and DHA. Contact lens wear can impact your meibomian glands. In fact, over time, meibomian gland dysfunction is the number one reason for patients to drop out of their contacts. We also see the meibomian glands atrophy. We don't know the mechanism, if that's mechanical or what's happening, but monitoring the meibomian glands has become something I do in my contact lens patients, particularly if they're complaining of comfort in their contact. We think it may be due to the mechanical trauma of the gland and plugging of the gland with epithelial cells and chronic inflammation of the lids. There's also cosmetic products that cause problems around the eyes and have a detrimental impact, whether it's creams, cosmetic, toxic preservatives, and too high of a concentration, of course, retinols. There's many, many, many things that impact the meibomian glands. And how do you know if they're blocked? What happens when they're blocked? Well, you can have symptoms of dry eye typically, but there's also an appearance to the lids when you have meibomian gland dysfunction. I notice that the lids become thicker looking. So if you've noticed your lids look thicker than they did when you were younger, if you compare back to photos, there's also a redness, irritation, tenderness of your lids when pressing on them can indicate that glands are blocked. And then all the normal dry eye symptoms that I say in every video, dryness, burning, itching, sticky or crusty eyes, watering, light sensitivity, red eyes, feeling like something's in the eye, Getting recurrent styes or chalazians is a big one if you keep getting infections. Those are infections within meibomian glands. So that tells us the gland is not functioning quite like it should. But you can have things like intermittent blurry vision or light sensitivity as well. All right, so that's meibomian gland dysfunction. We covered it again. What are we gonna do about it? How do you reactivate a meibomian gland? Well, your dry eye specialist will discuss ways to clear off the lid margin. I think the most important thing is clearing off dead skin oil bacteria which build up and create a little microbiome on your lid margin. That eyelid skin is extremely delicate so it's really really important to get it clean and doctors will tell you about lid scrubs, sprays, hypochlorous acid. I really like one of several things. You can use a tea tree based lid scrub, you can use a hypochlorous based lid scrub which can be great, or you can use zocular products, the ochre based polysaccharide type of product. Those are probably the most effective at breaking through that microbiome and it's going to depend on your situation. I have found that patients with impaired skin barriers, people with rosacea perhaps, have a harder time with tea tree. If tea tree is really really irritating to you, you may rotate your treatment and cleanse your lids alternately with hypochlorous acid one day, tea tree another. It definitely is an option to treat with multiple different lid cleansers and maybe not do the tea tree oil every single day. But I think the first thing is cleansing the lid margin. Another way of expressing your glands and getting the oil to come out is a warm compress. So many, many studies show, I believe it's, you know, 42 to 45 degrees Celsius. This has been looked at. I made a whole video about warm compresses. You can heat the eyelid margin for an adequate amount of time, 10 to 15 minutes to increase oil production, melt that oil that's become solidified and crusty and solid in the glands. You want to use a compress. So this video is sponsored by my friends at iLove and they have a really great compress that can be heated in the microwave used to heat the eyelid glands and that's going to warm up the oil allowing it to flow more freely. So you can do this twice a day initially when there's active symptoms and then you always want to maintain your dry eye treatment. So think about it like what are we doing now to make ourselves better? Maybe twice a day with a hot compresses and then in the future we will maintain so the glands don't become so clogged again. Now eye massage is really really important and depending on the type of warm compress you might want to do this right after the warm compress. So you can apply light pressure with your fingertips to the lid margin just above the eyelashes. Remember the glands are right here at the margin of the lid. So it's not really helping us to massage up here right? Like we don't want to be way up there on our lid margin. We want to be right there at the eyelash. You want to roll the finger upward on the lower lid kind of look up and I like you to move up and out in one direction only we're not massaging back and forth we're massaging 
10 firm upward and outward with pressure on the lower lids and then it's down and out on the upper lids. So we're trying to get as close to those lash margin as possible. You don't wanna excessively manipulate your lids or cause additional irritation, so please be careful. But that is the right way to do a, a lid massage. Up and out on the bottom, one direction only, down and out. Now you can combine the lid scrub with the lid massage. If you are doing warm compresses, you can wrap your finger in the lid scrub and do the massage after the warm compress to kind of do both at the same time because a lid scrub is going to remove oil, bacteria, debris, blocking that oil gland and let the oil come out. You can use a Q-tip. You know, I sometimes will use a cotton tip applicator or a Q-tip in my clinic, or you can use your fingers or you can, you know, wrap your finger in a lid scrub in order to scrub that lash margin. Just be very, very careful. Maybe use a magnifying mirror. My friends at Ilif have a great tea tree oil wash that they use. I also really like the stuff from Zocular and, and the folks from Ilif have a great hypochlorous acid as well. So choose one of those products, which we'll definitely link below. Those aren't going to burn your eyes are not going to irritate your eyes greatly sometimes tea tree oil a little bit but definitely approved in the eye area if bought from an eye company you can think about using omega-3 fatty acids my friends that i love have a great one i made a whole video about omega-3 acids improving the quality and consistency of the oil produced by the meibomian glands i think this is especially helpful if you're doing some active evacuation of the glands whether your doctor's doing that interventionally in their office or you, you're doing some meibomian gland expression at home being on an omega Omega-3, especially during that time period, I think is a really good idea. Just make sure to reference my video about the type of fish oil you want because you really want it to be pharmaceutical quality, high grade fish oil. So lid massage can dramatically improve symptoms by helping reestablish the tear film stability. And we have research behind this that after gland expression, tear breakup times return to normal and in some cases even better than they were before. So you wanna extend that finger, apply light pressure, Roll your finger upward on the lower lid two times while in up gaze and then downward two times. Oh, okay, this is another method. So you can go kind of up and out across the lid or you can just kind of gently with your, your fingers like roll, but you're not wanting to squeeze. We're just trying to roll that lid to get the oil to come out. You don't want to excessively manipulate your eyelids because you can additionally kind of irritate them. So maybe do it twice a day at the very, very most during the acute period. But really after that, no more than once daily is needed. And you definitely want to follow up with your doctor so that if in-office expression is needed, if in-office lid hygiene is, is needed, if your doctor feels that you need to have your lids you know super cleansed in office with a zest procedure or micro bluffer exfoliation like we do with bluff x they can do that for you and then you can maintain those results at home so does my booming gland expression work i think that expressing the contents of the glands helps diagnose my booming gland dysfunction yes but it really really helps with patients outcomes as well i have done so many expressions lately i'm doing lots and lots of them and patients really feel that that helps the glands get going there are dis Dissenting opinions, however. I think you have to be incredibly careful with how much pressure you apply to the glands and what you're doing before. So some doctors are expressing glands after IPL. Is IPL enough of a heat therapy to do an expression afterwards? I don't know. I don't tend to think so, but other doctors do. And so you will see some differences in opinion. There are some doctors who will also express after LED light therapy. I have myself expressed using Dr. Toyos's Q device, doing a Q treatment first and then expressing after, but I use a very different pressure than I use with, you know, like a thermal expression, like um, the tear care devices that continuously heat the glands for 15 minutes. So I think, you know, provider discretion, especially with these interventional treatments in office just kind of asking your doctor good questions about how much heat is being applied how much pressure are you going to apply will you continue to squeeze on the gland if you're not getting anything out of it i think those are good questions to ask your provider because we're all kind of figuring out how much expression is too much but it definitely definitely helps and i think just being judicious about the use of you know how much force you're using on those glands because there are also others who believe that we shouldn't put too much pressure on glands we can cause damage to the glands. We can make them so that they don't produce oil anymore. You know, there's those out there who believe gland probing is the way to go. And I certainly see the need for that. If you have 
oil in your glands that has a lot of scar tissue has been in there a long, long, long time and we're not getting up much out with expression, then I think at that point, probing that gland and trying to break up scar tissue so we can get more oil to flow is a really great complementary treatment. So know that at home, I don't want you putting this much pressure on your glands. I don't want you getting the doctor devices, the paddles that we use to squeeze your glands. I've heard of patients doing that. I think just rolling with a Q-tip or your finger is about the max I would recommend at home. But in the office, just asking good questions about how your doctor's philosophy, how they decide how much pressure to use and certainly I know I'm comfortable answering my patients about that and I'll be very honest if like you we're not getting anything out I think we need to probe these glands first and then go back to expression but your doctor if they're gonna express we use these little paddles there's a number of different ones I can throw a couple on the screen we're putting one side on on the inner aspect of your lid and one on the outer, compressing that lower eyelid, squeezing out the contents of the meibomian glands because the meibomian glands when you have MDD are full of stagnant secretions. And the pathophysiology of what happens in MDD is that those secretions block the gland opening. And when they do that, the gland itself kind of shuts off, right? It stops creating new oil. And then the oil backs up with bacteria, which produce their own waste products and pro and inflammatory agents and so you end up with a swollen backed up lid and we need to get that oil flowing again drain the glands encourage the production of new secretions wake it back up essentially and I have seen patients in my clinic where we thought their glands were atrophied we thought they were gone and after IPL and gland expression we wake those glands back up now there are glands that atrophy but I have found that gland expression has been very very helpful for my patients in most cases the procedure is fairly painless but if you have really backed up glands and eyelid inflammation we might have to do anti-inflammatory eye drops for a few weeks beforehand to calm it down i also will tell you that the first expression is the worst and then they tend to get better after that and that's just a testament to the fact that you have an inflamed lid and the first one is going to be kind of tough it's i have to put more pressure on to get oil out your lid is just more inflamed but we anesthetize the lids and i take a lot of breaks and just do sections of the lids and i also know when to stop we're not going to just keep hurting you and keep squeezing your lid to try and get oil out if they're not ready we can always go back to the drawing board do ipl do light therapies try to break up those expressions and if you can't break them up in that way maybe doing a probing of the lid like Dr. Maskin does is a good idea. So the gland contents when I do an expression and when you do them at home they can be clear, cloudy, buttery, gelatinous, toothpaste like, sometimes they come out like spaghetti, sometimes nothing comes out of that gland. It's really really common to have frothy secretions. Sometimes patients can look at their eyelids and their tears and actually see frothing and often patients who've taken retinoic acid like Accutane in the past will have little plugs of solid lipid that blocks the gland orifices and once you get past that plug it's more normal oil behind it. So it really really varies but I have found that just about every gland expression is a good one because we're getting that thicker oil out but usually thinner secretions and more glands with oil coming out is better that's a more normal situation and the more you express this is really important the first expression might hurt and that oil might be terrible coming out and your lids might be kind of inflamed for a few days afterwards but the more expressions we do I tend to see those glands get better and better and it affects the patient less and less because they're making new, better oil again. So some patients just need a single treatment. Others benefit from regular expression. It is totally normal to have to do the procedure even monthly and then sort of just see after that how often we need to do expressions. But you as the patient will typically quickly work out how often you need to be seen and how often expressions need to be done. If you have mild MGD or these symptoms have just started and you can get kind of clear expression out, out, then you may be able to do the expression yourself. If there's a blockage that cannot be expressed, as when there's fibrotic tissue constricting the gland, pressure can force the unwanted material deeper into the gland, causing additional trauma. So this is why I really advocate for you to ask a lot of questions of your doctors and see if they have meibomian gland imaging so that they can know as much about your oil and your glands as possible, because we certainly don't want to be exacerbating meibomian gland dysfunction in doing these expressions. In general, 
general, make sure to blink a lot when you're on the computer, use warm compresses on a daily basis, and then do some little self-expression, just easy gland massage at home, I think is a really good idea. And don't be afraid to call in your eye care provider for those more extensive expressions if you need them. Okay, that was a long one for gland expression, but if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, please hit the button and the bell so you don't miss notifications. That's gonna be it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.